A big welcome to you on this Thursday night to Outlook. Chris Eddy sitting in for Jeff Fallons this week. On tonight's program, we'll look at an Ichuka company which is having trouble keeping up with the demand for its product. And also, we learn a few little known facts about measles. But firstly, Angora goat farming. It's becoming big business in the northeast of Victoria with more and more farmers latching onto the idea. Just last weekend, seven goat studs in the area opened their gates to the public with the demonstrations of shearing and handling. But as Helen Ballard discovered, there's no doubt the attraction of Angora goats hits higher than the hip pocket nerve. We are creatures of love. We are creatures of love. Goats, they really are creatures of love. Just ask John Holmes from Hutjina Start in Kingupna. Yeah, a lot of people say that all the goat people are a little bit mad because we tend to talk to our animals and uh, possibly that's why it grew out of a cottage industry because it was very common for the wife of the family to run a few goats and she would go out and talk to her little babies. Well, we tend to do that a little bit here. Uh, in fact, um, you know, I've often... People have looked at me rather queerly as I sort of talk to the animals, but it's because they're intelligence, because they do respond, and uh, you get very attached to them. John is one of eight goat farmers in the northeast who years ago would have been the butt of many jokes. Those were the days when goats were considered a leisurely diversion, a far cry from the industry on the threshold of boom today. And a boom industry it could very well be. According to the Bureau of Agricultural Economics, it's the fastest growing agricultural industry, with goat meat being the most popular meat eaten throughout the world. John has 450 goats on his 50 hectare property and hopes to expand the business to about 700 goats. So apart from the financial rewards, what's the attraction? Love of the animals, uh, love of uh, the country life, I think. Um, I do really love goats. I think they're fabulous and they're, they're really intelligent animals to work with and very rewarding. When it comes to shearing, which is done twice a year, the returns are quite high. The going rate for a good kid fleece is $26.50 per kilo and for an adult fleece, $10 to $12 per kilo. The wool style and character, as they call it in the business, also depends on the amount of unwanted hollow fibres and the prized electricity or curliness of the wool. During shearing, John uses a clever computer system to record the condition of the animal itself. So when it comes to buying and selling, he has the good and bad breeds of goats at his fingertips. The Angora's fleece is quite different to that of a sheep. It's less oily and a lot finer, and subsequently needs a lot more tender loving care. The fleece of a goat, they call it the diamond fibre, uh, possibly because it's used in many aspects of the textile industry. Most uh, suits that are used in um, high fashion garments in Europe have mohair blending. Upholstery uh, that's of high class has mohair blended in it as well. And uh, it's, it's a lovely fleece to handle, lovely fleece to feel. Of course, like all good products, mohair is relatively expensive. That may be bad news for buyers of winter woolies, but is definitely good news for goat farmers. No, it has pushed the prices of mohair up. Uh, I'm talking mohair now and not of animals, mainly because the, as we increase the amount of mohair that's available for sale, more and more overseas buyers are being attracted to Australia to purchase their mohair requirements. Our fleece here in Australia is finer than produced in other parts of the world and uh, already we're starting to see a lot of interest there. Animal prices uh, are coming down and they must come down out of that cottage industry price to become a viable industry. Farmers, uh, when they look at a return uh, on an animal, they have to see that if they're purchasing an animal at a certain price, they are going to get their money back and it's going to make them money. The cost of keeping Angora goats is similar to that of sheep, except that the kid goats need protective shedding and fences need to be very secure. But there are cost savers. For example, less money is spent on preventive medicine like worming, and the goat farmer needn't worry so much about applying chemicals around fence lines and channels. Goats, so they say, rip through weeds faster than wildfire. And when it comes to breeding, the quirky creatures are no less proficient, even if they do occasionally need a helping hand. Yes, there are ways, and we have done it here with the introduction of hormones. Uh, there's also ways of introducing 
bucks into a, a group of does that haven't uh, been in sight or smell of a doe for some time and you can actually get them to uh, cycle, to come in a heat cycle, uh, to breed twice from them uh, in the one year. Uh, it's possible on irrigation where we are here because of the feed, the amount of feed that's available and it is quite a, an economical way of breeding. I think we can see the potential of it and I think any industry which is growing, uh, any industry which uh, really where there's a market for the product, um, it always gives you a, a, a what's the word, a, a, a thrill to be involved because you know that there is a demand for the product and we can see here within the goat industry that uh, there's such a demand for good quality goats, there's such a demand for good quality fleece that we feel that, uh, that there's a, going to be a very good return had for any that get into the goat industry early. A very funny uh, situation in a supermarket one day, I was with some friends and we had a couple of baby kids that we were actually going to kill to eat because uh, kid meat is beautiful to eat. And uh, my friend said to me, uh, have you killed those kids yet? And I said, no, I'm going home after I leave here to kill the kids. And the expressions on the people that were listening on wasn't too good. Would be a bit of a shock, wouldn't it? Helen, Helen Ballard with that report on an industry that it seems we might be hearing a little bit more about in the years to come. We'll return with more on Outlook after this break.